begin right now. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Um, I am Ivona Alfred of ITDP and I'm your webinar host for today. Um, in today's session, uh, we are opening a three-part webinar series um, in which we're highlighting initiatives from the Boston region supporting the Boston BRT work. Um, and just quick uh, couple of notes about using Zoom in this session. This webinar will be 60 minutes and it will consist of uh, presentations and moderated discussion with a panel of experts from um, the different sectors. To help with accessibility, you can use the closed captioning and transcript functions in the Zoom um, from the Zoom control panel. Um, and you, you can access these pretty um, easily at any point during the session. We'll use the Q&A box to gather questions from the audience. And if the time allows, we'll incorporate, incorporate them in the Q&A at the end of this session. And finally, we are recording this webinar and it will be posted on our YouTube channel. This session will be moderated by Alphonse Tam, uh, Global Communications Manager at ITDP Global, who will also kick off the session with us. So welcome everyone and I'll pass it on to Alphonse. Thanks, Ivona. Um, I'm Alphonse from ITDP, as Ivona mentioned, and thank you to all of you joining us today from all over the world. Um, and just to give you some background, ITDP has been working on sustainable public transport projects in the Boston uh, metro region for almost a decade now. And today's webinar is the first in a series of webinars that uh, we're organizing to provide you all with more insight into our work and also all of the great partners like the ones we have joining us today that help make it all possible. So today's webinar, just to give you a bit of context, will highlight an important but sometimes overlooked element of our public transport systems. And that's the intersection of art, community, beauty, and mobility. Uh, we all know that transport and commuting takes up a really large part of our day-to-day -day lives. Um, but rather than kind of seeing it as just a transient space, uh, it's important that we also make public transport a destination in and of itself. So it can be a place for creativity, a place to learn, and a place to even find joy uh, where our speakers will be addressing some of the work that they've been doing to make this a reality in the Boston area. So the speakers we have joining us today, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about their work and experiences uh, through strategic branding, partnerships, and design to make uh, a lot of the work that they'll be showing uh, come to life. And specifically, they'll be talking about the process uh, the ideation and the kind of like engagement and capacity building that uh, made this possible. So introducing kind of Adrian Gill, the founder and creative director of Ad Hoc Industries, who will talk a little bit about the process um, and include the ideation stages, stakeholder engagement, and kind of creative strategy that went uh, into it. And then we'll also have Lucretia Thompson, uh, arts and culture planner for the city of Lynn, Massachusetts, which is just north of uh, uh, Boston. And uh, she'll talk and provide some more perspective uh, on what it's like to work within the city and the changes and impacts she's seen from this work. And we have Ann Sussman, finally, the president of the Human Architecture and Planning Institute, or the Happy, who will talk about the ways that new tools and technologies can help us assess and understand um, the impacts of our built environment. Their presentations that we'll get into uh, in just a second will highlight all of their different expertise uh, working in the arts, community design, and data um, for the public good. So we really hope that all of you, uh, especially all the folks from different cities joining us today, will gain some inspiration and insight into all the different areas of like public and private collaboration, and maybe even adopt some of your own low cost, high impact uh, transport projects in the future. So with that, Adrian, I will pass it on to you to start. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Uh, so good to see you all. Um, I'm really looking forward to share uh, today and um, thanks for uh, showing up from all over the world. I know it must be late in some some parts, so definitely appreciate your 
um, your um, being here. So I just wanted to start out. I know we're all lovers of public transit. Um, I believe I've been tremendously um, fortunate to be engaged with Boston BRT over the last 10 years. What was very unusual about this project was that um, as a, as a as a creative agency, we were engaged from the very beginning of the process. And that's really, really important because I know um, in a lot of ways and, and, and many times, you know, the, the areas of public transit are very pressing. And so there's a huge emphasis on, on uh, functionality of things, making sure things work. Uh, there's tremendous public pressure to make sure that there are no that nothing goes wrong. So um, there's uh, maybe a little bit of um, a lag in terms of when creative gets engaged. Um, in on this project, we uh, got engaged. Ad hoc industries um, got engaged uh, very early on, and that made a huge difference in the in the process. So I'll start out um, really quickly just with a. A quick viewpoint on on strategy, creative strategy specifically, um, where historically design has been treated as a downstream step in the process, uh, where designers are asked to uh, put a beautiful wrapper around an idea at the end of the process, but they're not in, engaged in the substantive work. Um, but now, and and specifically in this case, we were asked to. Um, create the ideas that help to meet uh, consumers, in this case, writers' um, needs and desires uh, and making them more attractive. So the end result was that there was much more value taken out of the equation. I think all of the municipalities definitely benefited from the creative element that was fused with the functionality. And that was the reason for a lot of success that we had. So I'll just take you through a, a few um, of the examples of um, what we uh, did uh, really, really quickly. Uh, a quick summary of what I just said is that creative is not something that comes after strategy is fully baked into it. And I think uh, if there's one message that I would like to leave you with, it would be this one. Um, so, um, so the first thing we did was to create a branding system. And the challenge that we had there was we were working with multiple municipalities. And the question was, how do we give them their own distinct look and feel, but still um, have it feel as a co cohesive? So this is where we ended. There's a lot of work that, that got us here. But you can see, whether well, it's Boston, Cambridge, Watertown, Everett, or Arlington, they all had a specific um color package that whatever we did you know regarding brt would carry these um this this look and feel so um for the city as things launched it was very appeared as very cu uh, curated and uh, cohesive um we very early on started out with how do we decide on on what we use for icons because you can't always say you know, bus rapid transit, dedicated lanes, it's sometimes you have to visualize it. So from the left, you had your dedicated lane icon, um, right turn only, uh, level boarding in the blue area, and then queue jump on the right uh, for the bus. So it was a very, very considered thing. And obviously we came up with graphics to represent the bus and we made them small. So it was easy to integrate them into different forms of communication. Even with how we thought about engaging community, we thought about that from a graphic standpoint as well. So if you look at the form of the bus, um, you'll see that the faces, the graphic faces on the page are uh, a reverse or upside down bus with sort of other elements to um, showcase and to denote persons. So even in our graphics, we wanted to include the human element. Um, and then the last thing here is um, there's a couple things that we we always think about. Um, there's a lot of promises, and you know, of course, you have to establish why you exist um, on projects like these. But then the experience is what really matters, and that is about what you do. And so, certainly, the majority of what we 
uh, we're focused on is how can we do things that engage the community, that made them feel that we understood um, their concerns and, and in some cases frustration, but in most cases, how do we bring joy um, to into the equation for them as, as writers? So in the case of Everett, um, we did the flower bomb. So we uh, literally covered the uh, a bus stop with fresh cut flowers. It lasted three days, but the joy that you can see, you know, in the community, all ages and uh, came to experience. And um, we gave away bouquets uh, for leftover flowers at the bus stop. And it was really, really, really uh, fantastic. Uh, to see even persons with cars stopping to uh, take a look and come over and experience it. So this was one of the first things that we did as a signature event around the launch of a level boarding platform in Everett. Uh, one of the things that we always do is we showcase the people who do the work. A lot of the time, these are invisible persons. And again, about humanizing the process, you show up in the morning and you see a brand new um, uh, dedicated lane, but who did it? And so we created a whole video around this called um, Everett Rolls Out the Red Carpet for its residents. And um, these are some of the outtakes uh, from it. But again, humanizing the process. Uh, for Cambridge, um, we, we uh, took over a, a hundred foot fence with a graphic um, uh, um, uh, banner. And, um, and then we also took over some of the bus stops with some graphics as well. So this is a little bit of what that looked like. Uh, we also rented pedicabs and we branded them and we gave people rides along the route to experience uh, what we did. And again, this was for a dedicated lane that we, um, we put in in Cambridge. Uh, we also had all types of collateral, things like postcards uh, with stamps on them, so people could send a uh, postcard to their friends if they attended the event. Um, so everything was very strategic in what we did to increase the memorability of what people were experiencing. We also wrapped a bus uh, as well, um, which uh, came out uh, really, really nice and created quite a buzz around the city. So you can see the value of what was created just from what was simply a, a dedicated lane was much richer and, and really drew the community in. Um, the, the latest two things that we did, one was Flower Walk in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Uh, and the second one, which you'll hear a little bit more from Lucretia on, is um, the uh, art, art on the Move exhibit uh, in Lynn, but I'll talk about Flora Walk first, uh, which was a placemaking um, effort around a dedicated, uh, sorry, a level boarding platform that we brought in from Spain. Um, but we, we wanted to figure out how we can bring the community in here as well. And, and, you know, sustainability was a key part of what we were thinking about here. And we really tried to say, well, how can we make this into something in a, a, a larger experience than just having the typical um, level boarding platform. So this is what it looked like before the palette that we started from, which is quite um, sort of, let's say challenging or a, maybe a little bit depressing uh, where we started. Um, so, but, um, you know, the, the question again came, came up and how can we bring more joy into the space? Um, and so we had this concept of an immersive place making, immersive place making activation with both living and graphic design elements to create a more enjoyable human public transit experience. Um, and so uh, what we ended up with was not only a graphic pattern on the platform, but we also brought in a designer, uh, a fabricator, an artist to create this ergonomic bench on which felt flowers were planted, uh, which were also given away to the community as they walked by or stopped um, to ride the bus. This was a youth group that added the handcrafted elements into it. They designed some bees which were painted on, on the trees that we um, implemented on the, um, on the platform 
um, you know, they painted on the on the pots by hand. Um, these trees that we bought in were over 20 feet tall, uh, large, taller than the street trees. Um, and you can see we also um, uh, added the name of the city onto the platform. This was designed by the man by us with the manufacturer so that it was not just painted on but it was integrated as an integral part of the design of the platform as it was in, um, it was constructed so that was done for a sense of pride and of course you can see the floral pattern there and this is what the installation looked like you know at the end so um what uh, resulted from that was incredible community engagement. You can see on the right hand side, people stopped by, they wanted their kids to help uh, paint the street, the bus drivers, everybody was really, really um, engaged in this project. And I think this picture is on the right with the dog is one of my favorites. Uh, if that doesn't communicate joy, I don't know what does. Uh, so we were extremely, extremely um, excited about how this project came up and again, taking what could have been a very functional product and created something that was special and inclusive of the community. And uh, as I said last earlier, uh, these are the faces of the people who did the work. And so we we're fairly consistent about that. Um, in making sure that there's visibility for the persons who are behind the scenes, really making things happen in transportation. Um, of course, we got a lot of great press. This was in the Boston Globe, and um, it was it was all the press came out to take a look and uh, interview the youth groups and as well. So there was quite a bit of um, additional work. We worked with our partners, uh, Dental Line, to create a PR strategy. So um, when you think about this as an overall uh, picture, you can see that there's um, quite a lot of st strategic thought taken into um, not only creating the, the activation, but also all the different parts that go with it from photography, which we did, video, um, and also making sure that there's a strong PR push as the project launched. And from here, I'll pass it on to Lucretia, um, who um, was leading the Art on the Move exhibit. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, good day, everyone. Thank you for participating with us on this webinar. I was really happy to be invited to participate in it because we had such a wonderful experience um, in the city of Lynn with this project. Um, as you can see in the other the other cities uh, where Adrian worked on these artistic installations for bus uh, for transit, there was an element of um, uh, in, in involving the actual transportation element of the of the project. We actually did not have any of that. We didn't do anything with bus only lanes. Um, we didn't change any routes or anything like that, but we thought it just wasn't the, the time for our city to do that. But we thought the concept of making the experience of, of uh, taking the bus and getting from one place to another, making that experience more enjoyable, more engaging uh, for the community, that was something we could do right away. And as you'll hear throughout this webinar, it's it's such an, a simple thing to do, um, such an easy way to add joy to people's lives while they go about their daily business. So the way we started was to work with ITDP, work with Adrian and his group at Ad Hoc Industries, Boston BRT, a couple of local organizations here in the city of Lynn, as well as our public art commission. And we were able to put out a call for art um, to invite people to, um, to participate in beautifying our bus shelters here. So we received uh, oh, just over 20 submissions, which was incredible. We chose seven artists. Um, there were no guidelines on 
where the artists could be from. We gave a preference to Lynn artists and we did actually have, I believe four of the seven artists are Lynn residents. So that was good. Um, we worked with our local public art commission on the call, reviewing the submissions, choosing the artists and took a, took a look at what sort of um, what what sort of art they were bringing to the table, like what materials they were using. And I was really pleased to see that we have we had artists who painted on the shelters, artists who painted and created some sort of stained glass effect. We had artists who used vinyl, cut vinyl um, on their pieces. So there was really a diversity of the types of art and artists that we had uh, for the for the installations. Um, what we saw is what what Adrian speaks about a lot is this public engagement and having the opportunity to kind of capture the the work as it was being done and archiving it so that we can show it off and show the complete process. Like these shelters didn't just go up and there are real people behind all of this work that we've done. Um, one story that I really enjoy is um, one of our artists, uh, her shelter, her bus shelter was right in front of uh, a food pantry. So people, it's a very busy intersection. People go there a lot um, and they go there, you know, throughout the week. People were bringing this artist um, food. They were bringing her snacks so that she could have something to eat while she worked. They would sit and talk with her as they did with other artists too um, for their shelters. So it was really this, this feeling of something is happening here in our community. Someone is doing something to make where I live, where I travel, where I work uh, more enjoyable for me. And, and it was just kind of heartwarming to see that kind of reaction to something that many people don't think about. Um, I really enjoyed adding the a bit of humanity to this process of waiting for the bus and you know going on on your way. Um, so it was it was just a really great project. And like I said, it was kind of a it was it was a significant task, but it's such an easy thing to do. Make something that people are using, we're using every day, and just make it better, make it more engaging. Um, and this project really was it was it was a slam dunk it was it was wonderful and our our mayor that's our mayor there he really enjoyed it he can't stop talking about it hopefully this will you know get us some more resources for public art in uh the city but um it was just truly a a wonderful process to go through we're very happy about it and with that I'd like to pass it over to Ann. Sorry, um, I believe we have a, a, a video that we are gonna show you um, right now. Sorry, um, one second, my computer just, okay. Um, Oh, sorry. We were going to show you the the shelters uh, at this point. The final, the final shelters. So, if if I could just add one more thing, we we, we asked the artists to um, whether they were from Lynn or not, kind of include something related to the city or the community. Um, in in their works. And so you'll see a lot of works have some icons from the city of Lynn. Um, and it was really inspiring to, to see a lot of that. Um, and it, it's just, I, I would also like to say, it's always a great uh, thing when you can pay an artist to produce. Um, and so we were very fortunate to be able to offer a, a significant stipend to all of these artists so that they could share their wonderful work with us.
Okay, and, and now I'll pass it on to Anne. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you so much. This is so perfect what you just what you just said, showing how we can take something mundane and make it really wonderful and make people happy. And now I'll just get into given that we're in Boston, um, the fact is this is a biotech hub and, and the new technologies we have available to us. I beauty runners from a segue. Next slide. Oh, thank you. So as, as Adrian showed, when we make a bus stop attractive, um, it really does make a matter, make a difference. And what you can do now is you can take two images, one of the original bus stop on the right and the updated one with the colorful flower walk on the left. And what you can do now is run it through what's called a biometric study. Take a look at how people actually take it in in the first few seconds. Next slide. And what you can see here, this is kind of amazing. This is using iMotions Online. It's, believe it or not, the same software Tesla uses to understand how their ads, how people look at their products. Um, this is software that measures people's um, how people's eyes move when looking at these two images. We gave people about 12 seconds to look at both of these images. We didn't tell them what to do. And what happens is the, their brain is telling them without their conscious awareness, actually, to look at the one on the left and to no, ignore uh, the, the regular bus stop. That's a huge data. And now we can now get the science of the, if you really look at how humans function as the primates we are, you can start to see why um, the putting design on a street really matters. On the left here, here is the um, Ziegler cladding with the Chelsea flower, flower, the flower walk on it. On the right, the original, what the original um, tarmac looked like, the original road looked like near the bus stop. Again, next will shows the eye tracking it, showing how people actually look at it. Next slide. And um, the brain is hardwired to focus on the patterns. Again, this is where I'm looking at the original bus stop on the right, the um, improved one on the left. Uh, you can see how one grabs people's eyes, even before they're consciously aware. What they're looking at, their, their brain is gonna make them because we are a social primate with a brain that hasn't changed for 40,000 years. We're hardwired to look for fractal shapes and pattern. And when there's blankness, our brain just tells us not to go there. Next. And again, here's another another thing, the same thing. Um, the same thing happens here again. Here, the original bus stops on the left. And what you can see here again is with the heat map, how people are drawn to really look more at the bus and actually focus around where the um, where where the bench is. And that actually matters. Those um, non-conscious predisposition in turn directs your conscious behavior and thinking. You're going to have an idea of sitting down at the bus or maybe even taking the bus because your brain is making you look at it more. As, as, as people say, out of sight, out of mind, you're not going to think about taking the bus as much because you don't even, your brain isn't letting you even look at it. So you can start to understand the mechanism for why these art interventions are Ask people uh, to tell us uh, whether they liked the first bus stop, the original or the new one, or they had no preference. Here was the results. Next slide. And people basically said they preferred the new design. What you can also, and what you can do too, this is kind of amazing too. There's now software, um, this is called Affectiva. It's facial expression analysis software it rolled out of the Media Lab at MIT. And basically you can measure um, how often people smiled when they looked at one area um, um, of an image versus another one. And you can actually see there's a little red line. It's a little blurry on the screen here, but you can see the red line is showing where people were looking, where they started to smile. The graph is showing when people were experiencing joy. They can measure that based on the movements of your lips and your eyebrows raising a smile. 
when people were smiling and more people were smiling as their brains started to look at the um, the flowered uh, bus stop rather than looking at the one that didn't have the flowers. So that's the amazing thing. We now can predict before something's even built uh, how people how people will emotionally experience it. Next slide. Oh, this is clearer now. Yeah, and this is the same thing here. Again, what's it, what it's showing is the red dots are showing aggregated data of where 40 people are looking. And then the graph is showing with a red line vertically running through it is showing where they're looking when they're most smiling. This is um, the, the joy graph. It's kind of amazing. You can actually, you can see this, this kind of software is very, very powerful. And this is what the tech industry and the business school, business school use now to design ads, to design products, because they want to make sure what your emotional experience is. Uh, so you can actually predict people will have smiles about passing the flowered bus stop. Now, this just this tech just came out about uh, late last fall. It's called Emotional Heat Maps. It aggregates the viewing data and the smile data they can now collect with facial expression analysis software, going pinkest where people were smiling most. And you can see there were basically no smiles uh, or positive experiences on the right and a lot on the left. Same thing here. You can actually see where people smiled. It's kind of amazing tech. So that's the big paradigm shift that we're having now. We're now understanding we're an emotional animal that thinks. And if you want to design successful planning, successful transit experience, you have to, yes, you have to think it's a logical experience, but you also have to prioritize the emotional experience to make it something to make people happy taking it. Next. So thank you so much. Let's design for joy. Let's acknowledge it matters. Feelings matter. And it'll make a more inclusive community. Um, it was been wonderful working with you all and bringing this all together and bridging disciplines to build a better world. Thank you, Anne um, and Lucretia and Adrian. Uh, that was great. I think there was a lot of content in there that it hopefully will be inspirational for a lot of folks. Um, so we're just going to start with some questions uh, to get to dive a little bit deeper into this work. Um, and I think kind of like a bigger question to start off with for, for all three of you is uh, what was the process like uh, working together uh, and also just bridging the city with community groups, um, with kind of like third party uh, folks and artists especially, and how did you all come to like a common vision? It's kind of a big question, but uh, maybe Adrian can start. Sure. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, no, I think the the really, really nice thing about this is that um, the 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 sort of excitement that comes with having creative as a hub is you have to think about in general, most persons in transportation and planning are dealing with very, very um, sort of you know, efficiency, effectiveness. And then it's amazing what happens when you introduce a little bit of creative. I think it makes for it so much fun to begin with, but it also creates a sense of, um, I don't know, just, just a little bit more of um, that humanity into what we do. And I think everybody feels it, right? When it's, when it, even during the process, and so I think that made it very, very easy for all of us to come together and for me to say to Anne, okay, well, how can we, you know, now add some science to what has typically been a very subjective process? And Anne says, oh, well, I know this great technology. I've been dying to use it. And, you know, so Lucretia is the same way. Oh, like, what if we made the these bus stops an art exhibit, right? And all of a sudden, if, if you took any one of those, you put them in a museum, they're worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm sure, right? But the general public and, and transit now has an opportunity to um, experience this as they wait for the bus. And maybe they don't mind waiting as much now, you know, <laughs> when they're in places. So I really think that, that that thread or that theme moving through also helps to um, uh, all the parties, uh, help all of us to work even more closely together. That's great. And uh, Lucretia, I don't know if you want to add anything from the city side of things. Sure, sure. So we were able to work with, um, in addition to working with our 
Public Art Commission, we worked with another local um, uh, kind of neighborhood source, uh, neighborhood support organization uh, to look at different bus stops and um, ridership, what the needs were of the riders, you know, times of day that they that they were using the bus, you know, um, and all of those things played a role in how we chose the bus stops to activate. And I also think it showed it showed some willingness to uh, include the community into these kinds of practical decisions. And I think that when you include people and organizations, there you get better buy-in, better ownership, people feel like they're being seen and heard. So that was really important for us to make sure we included the right community partners, whether or not they were arts partners or anything to do with transit. It was all about us working together to support and engage our community. That's great. And I know Ann uh, Lobder work was focused on measuring the impact um, after the fact, uh, so to say, but how important was it for you to have that kind of um, data to back up the, the results? It, it was just so exciting because um, people don't realize you can know the mechanism for why it worked. And when you know the mechanism, it's a revolution. Now we know why. And now we know why the traditional bus stops uh, don't work the same way. We actually have a mechanism for it. It's not just, you know, um, Adrian's a cool guy. No, it's just that there's actual science here. You know, <laughs> there's not just it's it's like or, or Anne's weird. She likes art. You know, it's 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 no, there's real science here, and we need to use it. And I guess for me too, why this was so important is there's a gap in our world, the business world in America, and particularly the car companies. <laughs> are using this technology to promote consumption voraciously. I mean, it's intense. And so we need, they're very, very smart. We need to use their science to promote well-being and walkability. You know, Apple hires PhD neuroscientists. There's a reason they do that. Um, we need to start really in incorporating science in, you know, how we look at a bus, how we design a bus, how we design our crosswalks. And they're not aware of it the way they need to be and the way the car companies and tech companies are aware of it. And so that's why this was this reaching out with Adrian ITDP was so important because now we can make this bridge. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, when people hear words like beauty and joy, it seems like far out there, but it's important to also show that you can actually measure the impact. Um, I want to turn quickly to just like a collection of uh, questions we got from the audience about what happens next. Um, and I think we can kind of group them together in terms of maintenance and repairs, what happens um, from the city's perspective um, in the long run and kind of how is, you know, officials and electeds responding um, to the next steps um, after all this kind of like beautiful artwork is complete. Well, I would say that when we put out the call for artists for this initiative, we made it very clear this was for, it was a, a temporary public art initiative, meaning uh, at some point it would probably have to come down. Um, they were not meant to be permanent, which is good because they're outside and exposed to elements and all sorts of other things. So we made it very clear with the artists that we you know their their works were going to live as long as they would live for one of our shelters in particular um the the artist painted uh his shelter um and i don't believe used any sort of sealant so his work is starting to peel off part of it is the elements part of it is like people at the bus stop being, you know, fidgety, I think, and peeling the paint off, which is, that's just one of the, one of the pitfalls of public art, you know, it's, it's, it gets handled. Um, but then there are other of the shelters uh, where the artists did use some sort of sealant, so they're lasting longer. 
the artists who use vinyl, those seem to be holding up really well. As far as the city goes for maintenance, the city really is not playing a role in, in that. Um, the city helped with power washing all the shelters to make the make them easy for for uh, the artists, but we really have put this kind of in the hands of the artists. And um, the the deal was they will stay up as long as they look lovely. Um, one we're we're thinking of of probably trying to um, take to to remove that one because it's just starting to look bad. Right. And I think someone yeah. in the audience pointed out that uh, all of the snow that <laughs> the region gets uh, obviously could also wear on the, the project. Um, Adrian, sure. I don't know if for Chelsea and the Flower Walk project, you have some insight into what that might look like in terms of maintenance down the line. Yeah. First, I'd like to add one quick thing to what Lucretia said. The artists are very, very invested and they took weeks doing this. Um, and uh, some of them are planning to come back in the spring to touch it up. So, you know, they're very, very, you know, they've, they're they very, very invested and uh, in seeing their work continue. Um, the, the one where, I don't know if you noticed, but we showed a, 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 um, a, an image of uh, one that was hand painted, this beautiful hummingbird, and then uh, there's the the there's some cutouts, and the sun hits it at a certain eleven o'clock in the morning, and it shows the the symbols for peace, love, and harmony, and um, you know so these types of things are like now ever present, and that was the artist who said, "I would love to come back in the spring and and make sure that it continues to to look good." So. Um, I think that's uh, that stands, you know, as a testament to how invested and how important public art is, both to the artists and to the city, as well as writers and passersby. Um, in the in the um, in Chelsea, we had a little bit of an issue uh, because temperature plays a big part sometimes in whether things stay or not. Um, when we were um, putting down the stencils on the street in Chelsea, um, it was a night where it was misting and lightly raining. Now, that turns out to be fantastic for photography. And some of the photos that you saw that looked so beautiful, it looked like a movie set, like we had sprayed the thing down, like, you know, to make it look like a night scene that was beautiful. We were out there with um, leaf blowers, trying to get that thing to dry, <laughs> you know, before the traffic came by in the morning. And then the traffic came by in the morning and we started to know, to see some degradation. Um, and so we ended up redoing it. Um, the, and we used it to, the, where we did spray paint on the platform and in the intersection crossings and so on, that held up pretty well. But some of the other areas where we used paint, uh, we did um, notice some, well, there was significant um, uh, degradation over time. So I think it's really, really important to choose um, the time of year, uh, make sure that there's enough time in between when the project is complete and when cars, if it's on the street itself, when traffic goes over it. Great. Yeah, that makes sense. I think um that also kind of connects a bit to some questions about wayfinding overall and kind of the strategy um of creating signage that helps people while also integrating it with the art so i don't know if there's anything specific you want to talk about in terms of the the ideation behind that um yeah and i think um the ideation part uh is something that um you know, is, is always probably the most um, nervous part of the project for me because, you know, there's there's tons of competing ideas, but then how can you bring something that, um, that adds a bit of context? So the context in this case, I, I wanted to convey some sense of uh, environmental sustainability for Chelsea in particular. 
And so that was the idea behind Flower Walk, where you have living as well as graphic existing together. Typically, you will find graphic or living. And combining the two was something that was really, really important for us. As soon as we planted that, oh, so we planted about 15 trees that were about you know 20 feet high, taller than the street trees. We also planted about 200 um odd uh, plants in the in those plant pots designed to show color during the summer, the fall, and for winter interest. But as soon as we planted, literally within 15 minutes of planting in the first pot, and these were large pots, there were butterflies and bees. And the, from there came the inspiration, well, why don't we include this youth group? And we did a little bee sketching competition, literally on the street. And then we had a local artist guide this youth team to paint those, um, um, bees and butterflies on the plant pots. So um, it's a very, very iterative process um, in order to make some of these things happen. And it's a testament to the team working well together. The ergonomic bench was also something that came together um, in a very, very, uh, if you look at that, um, at that bench, you'll see that the pattern for the flowers are not just topically put on the uh, on the bench, they're actually etched out with the colors um, that we chose. So, you know, it was really, really intentional. And um, the whole idea of curves, right? The floral curves and the curves of the bench. Um, and we'll tell you a little bit more about the science about that, but um, there's science around how, you know, curves impact how people feel. So all of this sort of went into the strategy of making this work into something special for the community. That's great. Yeah, it's not just form or function. It's kind of both <laughs> uniting um, in a lot of ways. Uh, as a question just for all of you, what did you all find the most surprising in, in doing this work? For you personally or you know, for your organizations? I think how happy people were, <laughs> you know, seeing so many people so happy, seeing the public works people happy, seeing everybody just so excited. The energy was just really, I'd never seen energy around a bus stop like that in my life. <laughs> and that's what was so exciting, how art brings the world together in this way. That was so exciting. And also, I think it was great. It was one small project. It wasn't a whole series. It was one bus stop. So then it's replicable. Is that the word? You know, you can replicate yeah. it if that was. But I think the happiness and, and the broad range of people, that's what was wonderful. And we don't have enough of that in our society, I think. So that's what was beautiful. For sure. Uh, Adrian or Lucretia? I, I agree with what Anne said, just um, that something so simple can make people so happy. Um, it, it certainly made me happy. And I had uh, friends coming in saying, hey, I saw the bus shelters. You know, people would say, I saw these, these bus shelters, which made me realize, okay, people are, you know, People are noticing them. It's it's being effective. Another thing that I really loved uh, is just taking care of the artists, making sure that they are compensated for all of their hard work and for the the bits of themselves that they put into this work. So I was really really proud that we were able to um, compensate them. You know, I'm sure they're not completely motivated by 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 the money, um, but it made me feel better to know that you know they they were giving they were giving themselves to us, and we were able to support them so that they can continue thriving as artists. Uh, yes, yeah, certainly, and the the strategy around all of these progress uh, imagery, imagery and so on. This is all accessed by the artists so they can use it within their portfolios uh, and to promote for future work. So uh, this video will be distributed to them as well, um, as well as live on our own social media platform. So it's all an integrated strategy, which I think um, works very well. 
Um, the thing that surprised me uh, in Chelsea was that we had to close down the streets and we were working late at night because the, the tunnel in Boston was closed. So it wasn't easy for us to work, close off the street during the day. And so, you know, there were some nights where we worked till two in the morning and with those leaf blowers going and all the other noise that we were creating, um, I expected a bigger outcry for residents on that block. Um, I remember one morning in particular, we uh, we got back out like relatively early and we started the work was going, but we were, we were there until 2.30 in the morning. And this woman opens her window and I thought she was going to yell at us because we were literally working directly outside her window. And she opens her window and she says, oh my goodness, this is so fantastic to open my window and see all this color. Is this just for us? You know, we 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 need more color in our lives and more trees and, and plantings and stuff. It's extremely exciting and positive, right? And so for me, that was one of the biggest surprises because I was bracing for, you know, some sort of, <laughs> you know, something being thrown at me or something. But, um, you know, I think, you know, it just shows the power of, you know, what, you know, these types of initiatives can achieve. Yeah, I think those little responses can go so far, um, especially when they're encouraging when you're not expecting them. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, I think it would be helpful to know for many of you uh, what you would say for other folks in other cities um, in, in terms of how they can kind of implement similar uh, interventions that might be like low cost, but still have the same impact and what this kind of means for for uh, better design for public transport in general. Anyone want to jump in or? I mean, I would say um, just go for it. Certainly the experience we had in Lynn was not our idea. We were, you know, we got in touch with ITDP and and Adrian um, and learned about what had been done in other communities. Um, but once we started getting into it, it's like, why isn't everybody else doing this? You know, so I would say to other communities, work together with with um, you know your your neighborhood associations with your artists and just do it. Um, Someone just asked about the funding. Okay, so that's a thing. Um, the city, the city of Lynn didn't actually put any of the funding up for this, this project, which we really wish that we can do that. And hopefully we can at some point. Uh, but, you know, there's all sorts of grant programs for artists um, to do this sort of work. So. Like I said, uh, just be bold with it. Do it. it. It's such a simple thing and has such a great impact uh, to the community. And yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, I'd, I'd say um, where I started, um, engage creatives in the beginning uh, for overarching strategic approach to these things. Um, too often artists just get asked and designers just get asked at the end to come in and you know, paint an electrical box, which I think is great. But, you know, if they're involved in an overall strategy in a series of them strategically across the city, for example, then I think you begin to, things begin to link together and it becomes a better cohesive um, uh, work, um, you know, overall, both the technical side and and the creative or the, the artistic side. So. I would encourage persons to just, you know, make sure, don't assume that creatives aren't interested or um, or it might cost too much um, because, you know, part of the, the world of creative is, you know, working with constraints. So, um, you know, you can get a lot of impact when people are vested in an exciting project. And certainly this was the case for Lynn, you know, on the, any other circumstance, I think this these things would have, cost a lot more, um, but I think people love to give back to their cities and to uh, make the spaces that they um, walk by every day uh, more, more enjoyable. 
Thank you. Uh, and do you have any uh, closing statement um, just about what maybe other cities can learn? Well, I, I think beauty, beauty is a public health issue. We need beauty. If you need well-being, we need to bring the world together and beauty does it. Beauty matters. And I think we can show the science and I think we get you get this. What's so interesting is the energy you see in Lynn, what we saw in Chelsea, but the arts and the community together. People are very excited, very proud. And um, yeah, beauty matters. And now we have the science to show why well-being, it, it contributes to well-being. We should use it. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for taking the time today and sharing all of your insights. I think there's a lot to unpack, but definitely a lot to learn for, for everyone who was listening in and uh, hopefully can tune in afterwards. I'll pass it back to Ivona um, to kind of wrap up. Great, thank you so much, everyone. I really wanted to thank um, everyone on the panel today and, and you, Alphonse. I wanna thank Adrian, Lakrisha and Anne for really unpacking this uh, process. There's still so much to unpack um, and it's not enough time as as always, but I think we, we kind of like unearthed a little bit of um, your collaboration and the impacts and your strategies. So we actually will have a part two webinar on the Boston work, uh, the Boston BRT work, um, focusing on bus pilots on March 13th. There's a link in the chat um, it will lead you to their registration. So please take a moment to do so. Um, and also if you are a cycling enthusiast, um, next week we are hosting a web webinar on cycling infrastructure financing stemming from ITDP's newest report um, in collaboration with the World Bank. Um, so the link is also in the chat. Um, and whether it's a public transport bus um, or cycling, I think those topics are definitely relevant and interconnected. So do feel free to join us at any of those sessions. And again, thank you for all the panelists today. We hope to stay in touch with you and, and continue promoting um, this work that you've done together. Thank you so much. And thank you the audience for joining. Yep. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank bye you, bye, bye everyone. Bye.